everything you need to know about the Russian sleep experiment. Is it possible for humans to stay awake for days and still be able to function? Well, not only did the Russians ask that question, they made an experiment out of it as well. In this video, you will learn all about the Russian sleep experiment. Welcome to Curiosity TV, the place where you'll find answers for so many of your questions, Curiosity Addicts. We hope you like this new video we've created especially for you. We know how it feels to need your curiosity satisfied about something, so that's exactly why we're here. So buckle up, for this is one wild dream we're about to uncover together. If a stimulant gas was invented that could help you stay awake, would you give it a try? Don't answer just yet. Wait till you know what happened to those who were subject of the experiment conducted by the Russians. In the late 1940s, a number of Russian researchers used a gas-based stimulant on five people in an attempt to keep them awake for days, because during wartime, desperate times call for desperate measures. However, the process of the experiment went down gruesomely, and if you thought you ever had some serious sleep deprivation episodes, wait till you learn what the subjects went through during the experiment. So here it is, and this is not for the faint-hearted. In exchange for their freedom, prisoners of war were taken as subjects for the experiment. They were kept in a closed environment, and their oxygen intake was monitored to make sure that the gas doesn't kill them. The room had microphones and a 5-inch thick glass porthole-sized window to monitor them. The room had books, cots to sleep on but without the bedding, running water, a toilet, and enough dried food basically everything they would need for the next few days. The first few days went smoothly. Come the fifth day, the subjects started to show signs of severe paranoia. They started discussing war traumas. Then the paranoia started to kick in even more. They stopped talking to each other and began whispering things about each other through the microphone. What the researchers were interested in was knowing whether these hallucinations and paranoia were a result of the gas itself or the lack of sleep. And that is one thing we'll get to in a while. By day nine, researchers were about to get their answer. One of the subjects started screaming and running around the room while yelling at the top of his lungs for three consecutive hours to the extent where his vocal cords were torn. Horrific, isn't it? Don't say you haven't been warned. We're just getting started. What was even more startling about the screaming man was how the other subjects reacted to his screams, or rather didn't react. They continued to whisper through the microphones until another one joined in the screaming as well. That was when the rest started tearing pages out of books, one after another. And then suddenly the screaming stopped, and so did the whispers. And it was, curiosity addicts, the calm before the storm. On the 14th day, even though the oxygen consumption indicated that the subjects were indeed still alive, researchers had to do something to make sure. They used the intercom inside the room to try and provoke the subject for a response, but with no luck. Were they still alive? Had they killed one another? You're about to find out. The researchers had to intervene. They announced through the intercom that they were coming in and asked the subjects to step away from the door and lie flat on the floor or else they would shoot them. They also promised freedom to those that would comply. It was a promise at which one of the subjects gave the most shocking answer. He said very calmly, we no longer want to be freed. On the 15th day, the door was open and fresh air filled the room, replacing the stimulant gas. That paved the way for researchers to come in and see what happened. The time had come to finally retrieve the experiment subjects. But the most unexpected thing happened. The prisoners were pleading for more of the stimulant gas, and their screams were now louder. And that's not even the terrifying part. What the researchers saw next when they entered the room left them in complete shock and horror. Four of the five men had their bodies exposed and their flesh destroyed. The wounds looked like they were self-inflicted. They had torn the skin and muscles from their own chest. Their internal organs were on the floor, and it seemed like the men were about to eat them. At this point, the researchers couldn't dare extract the subjects, especially if they were pretty angry about being denied the gas. And so they called for backup. Soldiers came to the rescue, but again, it was horrific as one of the subjects cut the throat of a soldier and the testicles of another. That day, five soldiers lost their lives as a result of the mad experiment, while others went completely insane and took out their own lives. 
Now, if you thought that was intense, wait till you learn what happened later. After finally sedating the men, they were taken to a hospital for immediate surgical interference. The first man was taken to have his organs placed back, but the doctors were shocked to find that he had become immune to the sedative. He fought furiously and managed to break free out of the four inch wide leather strap and the soldiers who were trying to hold him down. After finally managing to take control of him, the second his eyelids closed, his heart stopped. The autopsy showed that his blood had tripled the normal level of oxygen. The remaining muscles were torn and nine bones broke during his struggle to escape. The subject who had previously torn his vocal cords after screaming couldn't reject the surgery and only reacted by violently shaking his head in refusal. The doctors were able to cover his abdominal with what was left of his skin, all without using the anesthetic this time. The man kept making this wheezing sound, and when the nurse handed him a pen and paper, he wrote on it, keep cutting. As much as the head surgeon admired his own work, he wondered how the man with such fatal injuries was still alive. The doctors operated on the remaining subjects, who underwent the surgery without anesthetics. It was almost impossible to perform, as the patients kept laughing hysterically. The moment the subjects were able to speak, they were once again begging for the stimulant gas. When they were asked why they had harmed themselves and why they kept ripping out their own guts, they responded with, I must remain awake. The commanding officer then came up with an idea, another killer one, literally. He suggested putting the men back under the gas stimulant, as hell broke loose when they were deprived from it, remember? The researchers strongly disagreed, but the commander followed his plan anyway. Once the men were back in the room and under the effect of the gas again, they were calm again. In fact, they got so calm that eventually one of the subjects flatlined and died. The last survivor was then shot by one of the researchers who just couldn't keep up with the madness anymore. The researcher had to kill the commander as well. What are you? I must know. The researcher shouted the last question before the subject walked toward the lights. Now listen to this quote that you'll probably never forget. Have you forgotten so easily, the subject asked. We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. Crazy, right? So crazy that it sounds pretty unbelievable. So is it real? Was it maybe just a metaphor that at night the monsters inside us go to sleep? And what if we stay awake? Those monsters are unleashed? Some people claim that the Russian sleep experiment couldn't have ever happened. So many of its elements surely casts doubt on the credibility of the story. Leaving subjects unattended like that, surviving without organs pulled out of your body, and even if this had all been the results of the gas, well, both scientifically and historically, no gas has ever been found to be capable of keeping subjects awake for more than 15 days, let alone turn them into the walking dead. Also, no credible source has reported this story. And say the experiment is true, and somehow the Russians were able to invent a gas that will keep their soldiers awake for 15 days during war. How is this even efficient? Can you imagine the disaster of depriving soldiers from sleep and then handing them fatal weapons? If men were kept awake for more than 48 hours, they actually end up useless and pretty slow. So, curiosity addicts, we hope that after we have terrified you to the core, we were able to refute the claims of such a horrific experiment. Now's the time for a quick recap. A group of scientists wondered, what if we invent a gas that will allow our soldiers to stay awake for 15 days? And so they developed the gas, and it was time to test it on humans. So they brought war prisoners, promised them their freedom after the experiment, little did they know, and locked them in a room filled with the gas. First five days were okay until the subjects started to completely lose it. They destroyed everything, including their own bodies. On the ninth day, when the scientists finally decided that that was it, they opened the door to find the prisoners lying on the ground surrounded by their own organs. One subject was found dead and the others barely alive. Soldiers came, subjects were hospitalized, underwent surgeries, resulting in the death of one and the others screaming for another dose of the gas. 
The rest were back in the room where one just flatlined and the other was shot by one of the researchers who finally decided to put an end to this insanity. Some believe that the traumatizing experiment never happened. Thank you, Curiosity Addicts, for tuning in and watching our video. If you found it interesting, make sure to subscribe to our channel, Curiosity TV, and turn on the notification bell for more mind-blowing topics that are yet to come your way. Leave a comment and tell us if you believe the experiment happened or not. As always, your feedback and comments are much anticipated, so hit us with whatever's going on in your curious minds. Stay safe, and until next time, and next ride, Curiosity Addicts!